Hi, my name is Nathan Crocker. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year, the battles, sieges, fortunes that I had passed. I ran it through, even from my boyish days to the very moment he bade me tell it, when I spake of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth escapes in the imminent deadly breach, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery, and my redemption thence, and of the cannibals that each other eat, the anthropophagi and men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders. This to hear would Desdemona seriously incline, and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse, which I observing took one suppliant hour, and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart, that I might all my pilgrimage dilate. I did consent. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith, t'was strange, t'was passing strange, t'was pitiful, t'was wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, yet she wished it heaven, and made her such a man. She thanked me, and bade me if I had a friend that loved her. I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spake. She loved me for the dangers I had passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. And yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. But once put out thy light, thou cunningest pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can again thy light relume. When I have plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again, it needs must wither. I'll smell thee on the tree. Oh, balmy breath, that dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. Once more, once more. Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. Once more, and that's the last. Whoa! Whoa! You're not allowed to say those words. Those words are restricted to old and married people, and we are definitely not old or married. I have a fear of commitment. I don't even like the sound of the word. It sounds too much like committed, which reminds me of an insane asylum or prison. And I don't want to go to prison, not even for you. I can see it now. Me in a cell with ten fat, hairy guys in cut-off shorts, waiting to make the move on the short black guy hiding in the corner, quietly crying for his mother. I don't want to be that guy. I mean, and if we keep saying those words, we'll end up saying them in front of... 300 of our closest friends, and you know I have a huge fear of crowds. And then, and then, you'd get pregnant, and gain weight in unattractive places, and everything that was once perfectly placed would begin to topple over in an avalanche and flood. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, I, I know none of this makes sense right now, 
And I could go on and on about how much I hate marriage and, and kids with small bladders, but the point is I do care about you. I'm just not ready to say I love you. I love you. I guess that wasn't so hard, was it? Thank you. <laughs>